It's been nearly a year since James Gunn's announcement video regarding Gods and Monsters, the first chapter of the new DCU, and in that time, a surprisingly large amount of characters have already been cast, even if the majority of those castings are from the earlier projects, Creature Commandos and Superman Legacy. In this video, I'll be going over the 30 characters and the 23 actors who are playing them, because there is a little bit of overlap between actors and characters, who have been cast in the DCU, what projects they are appearing in, as well as what other projects they can potentially appear in down the line, and other information we know regarding the character, whether that be in how they're described, or what roles they might have in certain stories, and I'll be doing all this in reverse order as to when they were announced, starting with the newest castings. So make sure to like this video and comment which casting is your favorite, and let's begin. The newest casting is a bit of a technicality that I decided to include, as there are three characters who we now know the actors for, but we don't know who those actors will be playing. After another casting that we'll get to in a minute that involved casting someone who's already playing someone in the DCU, James Gunn had to further explain on December 10th something that he's previously said, which is that actors won't be playing two different characters on screen, but can very well be voicing multiple characters in animation. And while doing so, James Gunn confirmed that Alan Tudyk, Maria Bakalova, and Steve Agee, who will appear in Future Commandos as some of the main characters, will be also voicing at least one more character on that show. This is pretty commonplace for animated properties, why spend money on another actor for a small role, when you can simply have one of your main voice actors do a mildly different voice and sound like a completely different person. Now with that in mind, chances are that the characters that these actors will be playing aside from the main characters will be minor roles, but at the same time, given that Sean Gunn voices two main characters on the show, it is also possible that that these extra roles will be an actual named and important character, but one thing is for certain that those characters will never appear in live action if the Creature Commandos main characters do appear in live action, because again, you can't have two actors play the same character in live action. There is also an etc here, so it's possible other actors on the show will also have multiple roles, it's also very likely, but there's no way of knowing which actors those are, so for now it's really just Alan Tudyk, Maria Bakalova, Steve Agee, and Sean Gunn. The casting that brought all this up was Sean Gunn being cast as Maxwell Lord on December 8th, 2023. Although he was actually not cast for any specific property, it was said that he may cameo in Superman Legacy, but beyond that, we don't know where he'll appear. This will make it Sean Gunn's third official role in the DCU, and depending on the canonicity of his role as Calendar Man in the Suicide Squad, it may very well be his fourth role, which to be honest, although I am a huge James Gunn fan, it isn't the best look for his brother, Sean Gunn, to have this many roles, especially since when I saw the casting for the first time, I was a bit confused. Nothing about Sean Gunn makes me think of Maxwell Lord. Not at least until Gunn heavily hinted that this world's Maxwell Lord won't take the later added criminal mastermind with mind control power elements of the character and instead base it solely on his original depiction as a flawed but well-meaning businessman who's sort of a worldwide liaison benefactor and partial founder to a new version of the Justice League, which would become known as Justice League International. This is a portrayal that would deviate tremendously from the DC EU or even Arrowverse portrayals of the character, but it's one that definitely fits Sean Gunn far better. As mentioned, we don't know where he'll appear, and I would have initially said Booster Gold given his prevalence in the comic the show will draw inspiration from as Ted Kord's killer, but something tells me that this won't be a plot point in this world, we haven't seen Ted Kord yet, the Maxwell Lord that this is based off of would have never killed Ted Kord, so that probably won't be something that will be brought up, at least not for a while. A mere day after her boss was cast, which we'll get to in a second, on November 21st, Eve Tessmacher was confirmed to be appearing in Superman Legacy and immediately cast, as she's to be played by Sarah Sempiau. Eve is a character who was introduced in the first Superman movie as Luthor's assistant, and while she did make it into the comics, her appearances have been few and far between, including in outside media where her only post Donnerverse role was on Supergirl in a recurring role. And it's possible that this movie will be the character's big break into the Superman mythos. Speaking of the Superman mythos, not many characters are more important to it than Jimmy Olsen, who is confirmed to be appearing in Superman Legacy back on April 19th before being cast on the same day as Eve Tessmacher. Jimmy Olsen will be played by Skylar Gazondo, the first live-action Jimmy Olsen in, well, maybe ever, to actually have freckles alongside hair that is teetering between brown and ginger, which is good enough. Gunn has promised a far more faithful portrayal of Jimmy Olsen than recent live-action endeavors, 
And with Skylar being three years younger than Corrin Sweat, they should be able to manifest their classic dynamic without actually making Jimmy an actual kid. I, for one, would love to see the classic Superman trio become cultural icons again, and if anyone could pull it off, it'd definitely be James Gunn. On May 12th, an article about certain actors in the running for the main characters of Superman Legacy was released, which confirmed that Lex Luthor was going to be in the movie. One of the actors who in this article was confirmed to be in the running for Superman was Nicholas Holt who previously was also in the running for Batman, losing that role to Robert Pattinson. In what seems like a perfect twist of fate, Holt lost out the role of Superman only to become his greatest enemy, as he's been officially cast as Lex Luthor, which has been rumored for a while now. Initially cast on November 20th, we later learned that that was actually a leak as James Gunn didn't corroborate this casting until three weeks later on December 11th, stating himself that it wasn't a complete lock until then. He also confirmed that Lex will be bald, which you'd think would be a given, but I seem to remember a certain 2016 movie where it wasn't. Furthermore, Gunn said that he was looking for a Lex who is contemporaries with Clark. Holt and Corrin Sweat have a four-year age gap, so that fits. And finally, Gunn said that Lex will be different from anything we've seen before, which is good to hear because, honestly, something we've never seen before in live-action movies is a comic-accurate, or honestly, even good Lex Luthor, so hopefully that's what we'll be getting. All the things considered, I think Holt is an inspired choice for Lex Luthor, he looks the part, or at the very least, will when he's bald. He's a great actor, and it's kind of poetic that he lost out the role of Superman, and also Batman only to become Superman's greatest enemy, like, it fits so well. The beginning of this huge casting week came on November 15th, when Maria Gabriela Di Faria was cast as Angela Spica, aka The Engineer, a member of The Authority. She was not cast for The Authority movie, but rather for Superman Legacy, confirming that at least some members of The Authority, or honestly for now, at least one, adding weight to the theory that the movie will take inspiration from What's So Funny About Truth, Justice, and the American Way substituting the villains of that story, the Elite, with the team they're based on and the team they're actually a commentary about, the Authority. For anyone who doesn't know, since she's a rather obscure character, Angela Spica was the second character to go by the Engineer. Although not really, the first one was an unnamed man who only really appeared briefly to be a part of Angela's origin story. After her blood was completely replaced by nanobots, Angela gained the ability to shift her body into basically anything, whether that be weaponry or special suits for specific situations, or a number of other abilities. The Engineer is one of the more powerful members of the original Authority, who I could see putting up a fight against Superman, although maybe not for long. The rest of the Authority have yet to be cast, nor have any of them actually been confirmed to be appearing in Superman Legacy, but it seems likely they will be, and it seems likely they'll be cast honestly any day now. It's possible this video will be completely outdated like a day after it's uploaded. I have no way of knowing. This next one is the only casting in this video that hasn't been officially confirmed by James Gunn, so maybe take it with a grain of salt. But on November 2nd, 2023, it was reported that Anya Shalatra, known for her role as Yennefer in The Witcher, has listed creature commandos on her resume, and more specifically in the role of Cersei. Cersei is a Wonder Woman villain, probably the biggest one they haven't used yet in live action, and a character whose agelessness allows her to appear in both the present day Creature Commandos and potentially a Wonder Woman movie, as well as Paradise Lost, which seems very likely, it seems very likely she'll appear there. Again, this hasn't been officially confirmed by James Gunn, but I decided to include it because it seems legit, and both the DC Wiki and DCU Wikis list Anya Shalatra as Cersei as a part of the cast of Creature Commandos. I also think this is a pretty great casting, and I think that Cersei should be the villain of the next Wonder Woman movie, so maybe I want it to be true, but it does definitely seem like it is. November saw the end of a pretty long break in casting, as the previous one was all the way back on July 12th when Anthony Kerrigan was cast as Rex Mason aka Metamorpho, a character we didn't know will be appearing in the universe at all, let alone Superman Legacy. And this in and of itself followed the previous day, July 11th, when three surprise characters, surprise heroes, were confirmed for this universe, confirmed for this movie, and were cast. Hawk Girl will be played by Isabella Merced, Mr. Terrific will be played by Eddie Gathagy, and Guy Gardner will be played by Nathan Fillion. Guy will have the bowl cut and probably appear on Lanterns. Mr. Terrific, aka Michael Holt, is likely to lead the Terrifics, and aside from Superman, he's the superhero in Superman Legacy that James Gunn is apparently most excited for people to see. 
Hulk Girl is very likely to be the Kendra Saunders version of the character, and Metamorpho is the only one of these characters to be making their live action debut. Aside from Nathan Fillion, who I think might be a bit too old and honestly a bit too handsome to be playing Guy Gardner, I think the castings are pretty fantastic. Gunn has clarified that these characters won't just be for the sake of cameos, they will play a role in the story, and serve as a way to show the Superman side of Clark when he's around other superheroes. Why these specific characters were chosen is unknown, I have a hard time believing that at least some of them could have be switched out with certain other DC heroes, but hey, it had to be someone, and this is a pretty cool quartet of C-tier superheroes. On July 9th, Gunn responded to someone on threads asking when we'll see Vigilante again, to which Gunn said probably before Peacemaker Season 2. This could mean Creature Commandos, Walder, Superman Legacy, and maybe certain other projects. Either way, while it had been hinted up until this point, this was the official confirmation that Freddy Stroma will be returning as Adrian Chase, aka Vigilante, one of the best parts of Peacemaker. Certainly in Peacemaker Season 2, but also probably in something before that, he is one of a handful of actors and characters that is being brought over from the DCEU. A mere five months after Superman Legacy was announced, keep in mind it's been four years since Fantastic Four was announced and we still haven't had any castings, the two main leads were cast for Superman Legacy. Rachel Brosnahan is going to be playing Lois Lane who is described as having nearly as large a role as Superman himself, while David Cornswent will be playing Kal-El aka Clark Kent aka Superman, certainly the most important character and most important casting in this video. David was by far and away the top fan cast for the role with fan art floating around the internet for a while before he was cast, and he has recently been seen bulking up for the role. Meanwhile, Rachel Brosnahan was apparently considered on the verge of being too old for the role as they were looking for someone in their mid to late 20s, but her audition was apparently so good they decided it'd be worth it. Notably, Corrin Sweat is an entire 32 centimeters or 1.1 feet taller than Brosnahan, which will make for a huge height gap between the two. Still, the two leads of Superman Legacy seem to have been perfectly cast. I'm absolutely ready for them to become the quintessential live action versions of these characters. While it was confirmed a while back that Peacemaker will be getting a second season, Gunn's new universe made those plans a bit unclear since it wasn't mentioned in the Gods and Monsters universe. That is until June 14th, when during a podcast with Michael Rosenbaum, Gunn confirmed that he will be working on Season 2 after Superman Legacy, and that the show will take place in his new universe, officially confirming on multiple occasions that John Cena will be one of the actors brought over from the DCEU as he reprises his role as Chris Smith, aka Peacemaker. In fact, Peacemaker will maybe take a psycho pirate like role of remembering a previous universe, as Gunn has mentioned how the show will address the in between season universe change in the show itself. Also, it's likely one of the main characters of another show will want him dead, we'll get to that in a minute. Before that though, in the same podcast, Gunn confirmed that the then at the time upcoming Blue Beetle will be introducing the first DCU character, although over time it's become clear, especially after the movie's horrible box office, that the movie itself isn't actually canon, it's more so like the canon of the Suicide Squad or Peacemaker Season 1, which I've been calling loose canon, where similar events happen in the DCU but not exactly. It's unclear what elements of the movie will be brought back aside from two things, Zola Maradona in the role of Jaime Reyes, and in all likelihood, the Blue Beetle suit will remain the same. Between Booster Gold, Guy Gardner, and Maxwell Lord, it's easy to see how they're leading into a Justice League International type situation, meaning Ted Cord will likely appear potentially on Booster Gold, which may very well be where Jaime Reyes is making his return. The first batch of DCU castings came in the form of the entire main cast of Creature Commandos being announced on April 12th. Included here are the returns of Viola Davis as Amanda Waller, although her return to this world was confirmed prior to this, which I'll get to soon, Steve Agee as John Economos, who will also be appearing on Waller, and Sean Gunn as Weasel reprising his role from the Suicide Squad, although it'll seemingly only be grunts and growls seeing as Weasel doesn't actually talk. Sean Gunn will also be playing G.I. Robot, a robot from World War II who really hates Nazis and mentions so all the time. Going left from there in this 
image, we have Bride of Frankenstein, played by Indira Varma, who we've gotten a better look at in concept art, which is also the case for Eric Frankenstein, played by David Harbour. Both of these Frankensteins are the actual Frankensteins, as that story actually happened in the DC Universe. At least that's the case in the comics. It might very well be the case in this universe, it seems likely. Batman villain Dr. Phosphorus will be played by Alan Tudyk. You might recognize the villain Blight, who's based on Dr. Phosphorus from the popular Batman Beyond the meme, or maybe just Batman Beyond itself, as he's like kind of the main villain of that show. Nina Mazursky will be played by Zoe Chow, a character who was initially created for the Flashpoint universe. She's a scientist who experimented on herself, turning her into an amphibian. Rick Flagg Sr. will be played by Frank Grillo. Sr. is the father of Joel Kinnaman's Rick Flagg from the Suicide Squad, who went through just about the same events that led to his death, which will undoubtedly lead to Flagg learning that Peacemaker killed his son, and he will go after him either by himself or potentially even manipulated by Amanda Waller. And finally, is an original character, probably hailing from one of DC's fictional Eastern European countries, Princess Ilana Rostovic, who will be played by Maria Bakalova. This brings us to the very first DCU casting, originating in the January 31st Gods and Monsters video. Waller was confirmed from the very beginning to be bringing back Viola Davis in her role as Amanda Waller, as her character is held accountable for her actions. Not only that, but as we previously mentioned, Davis is first reprising her role in voice form in Creature Commandos, which is a team that's actually been reworked into being a monster-based suicide squad led by Amanda Waller. And that brings us to the end of this video. Every character who has been cast so far for the DCEU. This is absolutely only the beginning. There's still hundreds of roles to cast, but I gotta say, while Nathan Fillion as Guy Gardner caught me off guard and Sean Gunn as Maximo Lord seems a bit weird, the castings so far have been absolutely phenomenal. It does seem to me like we're in for something special here. So let me know in the comments down below which one of these castings is your favorite, and thanks for watching.